Paddington was a very mischievous bear. He lived with his uncle Pastuzo and Aunt Lucy, a happy and loving family. They all cherished a dream of going to London. One night, as they were about to sleep, a strong earthquake struck their home. The bear family hurriedly evacuated their treehouse, but only Paddington and Lucy managed to reach the shelter. Uncle Pastuzo was still outside, looking at their beloved home. When the earthquake passed, they still hadn't seen Pastuzo. The once lush forest was now in ruins, and even the ancient trees couldn't withstand the earthquake. The two searched everywhere for their beloved Pastuzo, but he was probably gone forever. He had been crushed to death by a giant tree right next to their home. The forest was no longer a suitable place to live. Lucy and Paddington packed up and left their beloved forest. They rode to a nearby port, sneaked onto a lifeboat on a cargo ship, but Lucy decided not to go to London anymore. She would stay in a nursing home to live out the rest of her life in her hometown. So Paddington had to go to London alone. The ship was about to depart, and Lucy had to leave. Now, Paddington began his journey to London. Although he was lonely, Paddington couldn't give up eating. His suitcase was filled with jars of honey that Lucy had prepared. Without hesitation, Paddington nibbled on the jars. Paddington was brave, but Paddington couldn't stand the hunger. Soon, Paddington had eaten all of his food reserves. Paddington realized that he would have to work hard to find food from now on. After two days of traveling, the ship arrived at the Port of London. Paddington wandered into the station to find someone to adopt him. People rushed past him without paying any attention. Paddington sat alone and lost in the middle of the vast station. After a while, the next train arrived. A family of four passed by and avoided Paddington. Just when he felt disappointed, they turned back. Mary felt sorry for him and agreed to help. Henry, her husband, didn't seem to like Paddington very much, but he didn't dare argue with Mary, so he reluctantly agreed to take Paddington in until he found another family. Paddington then went home with Mary's family. Paddington was very excited about his new home. He also tried to practice personal hygiene like the people here. However, he made a mess as soon as he entered the bathroom. Paddington even used the toilet bowl as a wash basin, and he made the water overflow and flood the floor. The faucet also refused to stay still and turned to challenge him. Henry felt something was wrong, so he ran upstairs to check. Henry opened the door to a shocking sight. A huge amount of water had flooded the room, sweeping the bear and the bathtub downstairs. Everyone downstairs was stunned and speechless. They couldn't help but gasp in amazement. They eventually banned Paddington from going upstairs and made him sleep alone in the attic. After a long day, Paddington wrote a few more lines in his diary. He wanted to tell Aunt Lucy about everything in London when he returned. After a long night, Paddington woke up and prepared for a new day. He thought helping people would be easy, but everything Paddington touched turned into chaos. After breakfast, he went out with the Brown family. Today, Mary would take Paddington to find a new home. However, when they arrived at the station, they had lost sight of Paddington. The little bear was still struggling with the escalator. After a while of searching, they finally found Paddington. Mary took Paddington for a coffee, and at that moment, a thief came in and stole someone's wallet. Paddington saw him and chased after him to return the wallet. The thief didn't dare accept Paddington's kindness and ran away. Paddington was confused but still chased after him to return the wallet. Somehow, Paddington got hold of a police hat, which scared the thief even more and made him run faster. After a while, Paddington caught up with him and made him fall, causing the wallets to fall out of his pocket. Just then, two policemen happened to be nearby and arrested him. Paddington returned to the cafe to the cheers of everyone, as he had just caught the most notorious thief in the neighborhood. The next day, the newspapers were all about Paddington. Paddington and the children in the Brown family became closer. They played happily together like family. They also bought Paddington a warm coat and gradually saw him as a member of the family. However, their house was too small for Paddington to live in. So they continued to take Paddington to find a new home, but still couldn't find a suitable one. The whole family gathered to watch a movie, and surprisingly, it was about Paddington's house. He gradually remembered a story from not long ago. Six years ago, an expedition team came to his forest. The explorer discovered Paddington's family. So Uncle Pastuzo invited the man to his house. After living with the bear family for a few days, it was time for him to return. He said that whenever the bears came to London, he would welcome them warmly. He also left his hat for the bears to keep as a souvenir. That was also the hat Paddington was wearing. They must have known where to keep the bear by now. After the theft incident, a woman named Millicent, the director of the Natural History Museum, took notice of Paddington. She has a hobby of hunting and stuffing animals. Millicent broke into the station security room and tranquilized two guards there to watch the cameras and find the bear's whereabouts. She discovered Paddington boarding the train with the Mary family. After a search, she found their house. The Henry family all had to go out today, and they left Paddington home alone. Paddington took out a book to read to find information about the explorer. 
Unfortunately, Paddington tore a corner of the book and tried to fix it with tape, but it got stuck all over him. The more Paddington tried to remove it, the more stuck it became. Just then, Millicent arrived to kidnap Paddington. She broke the window and used a pulley to lower herself down. The phone rang, and Paddington went to answer it. Millicent waited for the opportunity to shoot him with a tranquilizer dart, but the tape ran out and pulled the bear back, saving Paddington from the dart. Millicent then threw a smoke bomb, and Paddington ran away. Millicent started searching and ransacking the house. She didn't notice that she had opened the oven, which was on. The fire spread to the surrounding objects. Seeing that things were not going well, Millicent ran away. It took a long time for Paddington to dare to come out of the refrigerator. The fire brigade arrived to put out the fire in the Henry's house. They thought it was Paddington's clumsiness. No one in the family believed Paddington's explanation. Paddington wanted to continue explaining about the incident earlier, but only Mary believed him. Henry always wanted to kick him out. Paddington overheard their conversation through the air vent and was deeply saddened. Paddington realized all the trouble he had caused them. Paddington decided to leave in the pouring rain. Paddington had nowhere to shelter, and the street songs only made him feel worse. Paddington was exhausted and decided to lie down on a bench to take a nap. The next morning, the Henry family discovered that Paddington had left home. They found a letter he left behind. It was an apology for all the trouble Paddington had caused, along with Paddington heartfelt thanks. After hearing that, everyone turned to blame Henry. It was because of him that Paddington left the house. Paddington was wandering around looking for the explorer. Paddington went door to door looking for him. Mary went to the police station to report, but she didn't have enough information, so they couldn't find Paddington. Henry also felt guilty about this. Paddington continued to search for the explorer, Mr. Clyde. Fortunately, Paddington finally found Clyde House. Sadly, Clyde had passed away a few years ago. The only person who greeted him was his daughter. Shockingly, Clyde's daughter was the one who broke into the Henry's house to kidnap Paddington. But Paddington didn't know it because Millicent was wearing a mask at the time. Millicent then lured Paddington into a car. This scene was witnessed by Henry's neighbor, who questioned her but she just brushed him off and even pretended to bark like a dog to scare him away. The neighbor immediately called Henry and informed the family that Paddington had been kidnapped. Paddington was taken to the museum, which was full of stuffed animals on display. Millicent showed Paddington her idea without hesitation. Paddington now knew Millicent's true colors. Paddington struggled to escape being taxidermied. Before he could run far, Millicent tranquilized him. The Mary family arrived and saw everything. They, they found a way in through the sewer pipes and turned off the power to the entire museum. Millicent was about to start her work when the power went out. She turned on a flashlight and started looking around. The four of them were waiting downstairs for an opportunity. As soon as she went downstairs, they quickly ran in to replace the locked door. Henry bravely climbed outside the building, then followed the brickwork to the window where he saw Paddington, but there was no way in. After a while of calling, Paddington woke up. Millicent went down to the basement and turned on the power. She discovered the Mary footprints and immediately closed all the doors. Paddington quickly ran out of the room, but she soon discovered him. Paddington hurriedly ran away to avoid the tranquilizer dart. After a while of running, Paddington reached Henry. Unfortunately, Millicent also chased after them. Just then, Henry's mother opened the door and walked up to them. She made Millicent slip and fall down. Luckily, Millicent was still alive, or Henry's mother would have been in trouble. The whole family then went down and hugged Paddington. The five of them returned to their beloved home. Paddington was now officially a member of the Brown family. He also sent stories from London to his Aunt Lucy so she could rest assured. Since the Mary agreed to let him stay, Paddington had become familiar with the people in the neighborhood. Everyone loved Paddington because he was a kind bear. He made friends wherever he went. In a few months, it would be Aunt Lucy's birthday back home, so today he went shopping for a gift for her. After searching for a while, he found a book with beautiful pictures of London. This would surely be a very meaningful gift, as Aunt Lucy had always dreamed of visiting London to see what it was like. Paddington didn't have enough money to buy the book, so he could only go to work to earn money and then come back to buy it later. Paddington got a part-time job at a barber shop. But just when the boss was away, a customer came in for a haircut. He didn't suspect anything and asked Paddington to cut his hair. The customer trusted him, and Paddington agreed, only to ruin the customer's hair. So Paddington was fired on his first day of work. Seeing Paddington sad all day because he was unemployed, the Mary took him out to cheer him up. They went to the fair to watch the show. Because of his cute appearance, the host invited Paddington on stage to tell a story. Paddington told about his kind aunt and how he was going to buy that special book for her. That made the host curious about the book. After the show, he asked Paddington more about it, and Paddington didn't hesitate to tell him which store was selling it. The next morning, Paddington started a new job, he started his career as a window cleaner. As soon as Paddington raised the cleaning solution, it suddenly fell straight onto Paddington's head. 
that made Paddington lose his direction and he ran straight into the next house. Paddington quickly used his fur to clean the window, leaving the owner very satisfied. From then on, Paddington window cleaning job went more smoothly. Everyone was pleased with the shine Paddington brought to their windows. As a result, Paddington earned a lot of money that day. After work, Paddington went to look at the book Paddington wanted to buy. He was shocked to see a thief breaking into the store and stealing the book Paddington was about to buy. Seeing his favorite item fall into the hands of the thief, Paddington called his dog friend to chase after the book thief. When they caught up to him, the thief had transformed into a magician and disappeared. The police soon arrived and found only Paddington at the scene. They suspected Paddington of being the thief and arrested him. The neighbors were very disappointed, but the Henry family still believed that Paddington was not a thief. The real thief was happy that someone had taken the blame. He was the same person who had told Paddington the location of the book, and he was also a neighbor named Buchanan. Buchanan stole the book because it contained clues leading to a treasure. The next morning, Paddington was put on trial. The judge was the same person whose hair he had ruined. With no evidence to prove Paddington's innocence, he was sentenced to 10 years in prison. After Paddington was arrested, the Henry family went looking for the real thief. They drew a picture of the criminal based on Paddington's description and printed it out to post all over the neighborhood. In prison, Paddington was assigned to laundry duty. He accidentally left his pink hat in the laundry with the clothes, turning all the prisoners' clothes pink. Everyone looked at him with loving eyes, and Paddington could only silently walk back to his eating place. The food there was no different from pig swill. The prisoners had to eat it three times a day, and in the past ten years, no one had dared to complain about it because the person who cooked it was the big boss of the prison. Paddington decided to teach the big boss a lesson. The warden saw this and called an ambulance. Paddington recklessly smashed a bread roll into the boss's head and sprayed sauce all over him. The other prisoners hid under the tables. The boss couldn't take it anymore and decided to make Paddington into porridge. Paddington was terrified. He accidentally stuffed a piece of orange marmalade into the boss's mouth. After tasting it, the boss's attitude changed. He declared to the other prisoners that from now on, this bear would be his second in command and no one would dare touch him. In return, Paddington would have to make orange marmalade sandwiches for him every day. Early the next morning, the two of them started making sandwiches. They worked together enthusiastically like professional chefs. The once fierce chef had now become gentle. It was time for the prisoners to taste the results of their labor. It was also the first time that the prisoners here had a change of food. Everyone was satisfied with the orange marmalade sandwiches. They didn't forget to give the two a round of applause. For the first time, the head chef was praised by everyone. Following his example, the prisoners who knew how to cook also volunteered to go into the kitchen. This made the kitchen more diverse and lively. Gradually, the gloomy cafeteria transformed into a place like a restaurant. Since Paddington arrived, everything here had become more colorful. The prisoners also became more harmonious and loving towards each other. Today, the Henry family visited Paddington and pointed out the suspect. However, he was a master of disguise and took on a different identity each time he acted, so it was impossible to know who he was. The next day, Mary printed out copies of those photos and distributed them to everyone in the neighborhood. As they were about to leave, a parrot suddenly spoke up, suggesting that the thief was hiding behind them. Mary, suspicious, decided to visit the neighbor, Mr. Buchanan. Sure enough, his eyes looked very similar to the thief's. The Henry family now shifted their focus to investigating him. The couple pretended to be visiting to get inside his house. While he was getting ready to go out, they snooped around and found a passage in the attic. They were right to suspect their neighbor as the culprit. The clothes in the passage matched Paddington's sketches. They went to report to the police, but they couldn't prove that he took the book. They also missed their monthly visit to Paddington, who was still waiting for them. It had been a while, and Paddington was starting to feel abandoned. Paddington began to dream about his happy days with Aunt Lucy, and his greatest desire now was to be free. At that moment, the chef offered to help Paddington escape. The other prisoners, also eager to get out, agreed. They waited for the power to go out in the prison and then started their plan. First, they jumped down the sewer pipe below, then went to the laundry room, gathered large pieces of cloth and a giant gas cylinder. They then climbed up high and patched the pieces of cloth together to form a hot air balloon. They lit the gas cylinder and successfully took off. The four of them took off their prison clothes and landed safely on an abandoned building. Paddington then parted ways with the other three. Paddington walked down the cold street with only one Vietnamese dong cent in his pocket. He finally used the coin to call the Henry family. They told him that the real thief was actually the neighbor who was hosting the fair. They all agreed to go to the fair to expose Buchanan. Suddenly, their car wouldn't start. Seeing this, the neighbors helped them push start the car. They also want to help Paddington return to the neighborhood. Meanwhile, Paddington had spotted Buchanan on a ship. Without thinking, he jumped on the ship, but the Brown family arrived too late to follow him. They risked stealing another ship to chase after him. 
Paddington's prison friends also found out about the news and decided to go back to help him clear his name, it turned out that the treasure was hidden on the ship, Buchanan entered the code to unlock the treasure, and Paddington located him, Paddington used sticky candy to sneakily climb from the top deck and successfully retrieved the book before climbing up, Buchanan discovered Paddington and chased after Paddington, it wasn't difficult for him to get the book back from Paddington, he locked Paddington in the last car and uncoupled it, at that moment, the Henry family arrived on their ship and jumped over to help Paddington. They found Buchanan and threw a ball to knock him unconscious. Unfortunately, Paddington's car had derailed, and the whole car with Paddington plunged into the lake. Mary quickly told her son to stop the ship so she could jump into the lake to save Paddington. The situation was urgent. They found that the door had a chain and couldn't be opened. Just when they were about to give up, Paddington's prison friends returned. With their help, Paddington was rescued onto the shore. Buchanan was arrested by the police. Only a few days were left until Aunt Lucy's birthday, but Paddington didn't have time to send her a gift anymore. Today, the whole neighborhood came to welcome Paddington back. To his surprise, they had already sent a gift on his behalf to Aunt Lucy. They had brought Aunt Lucy there to see London for herself, and the two hugged happily. The episode ends here. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.